Well, hello, everybody. Uh, joining me today is Gareth Rogers, and he became CEO of the Farmer International Air Show back in January 2018, just in time to head up the arrangements for that year's show, which drew uh, around 80,000 trade visitors. And of course, everything looked set for another record setting show this year, but then the whole world was gripped by the COVID-19 pandemic. And on March the 20th, the Farnborough team had to take the very tough decision to cancel this year's show. It was a bitter blow for the whole industry, a, a great disappointment for those of us who love going to the Farnborough show. Um, but not all is lost. That's the good news. Gareth and his team are hosting an ambitious virtual uh, air show online. Well, that's my term for it anyway, with an event called FIA Connect. And that's going to run from July 20th through to the 24th in what would have been Farnborough Air Show Week. So, Gareth, thank you for joining us. First of all, can you just please tell us um, what you're really trying to achieve with uh, FIA Connect and what the participants can expect from the event? No, absolutely. Um, like the, the great introduction, Charles, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, but it certainly was a, a tough decision and not one that we took lightly and, and one that we're still wrangling with, you know, even now. But um, it's, you know, like you said, all is not lost. This is about, um, you know, an industry that is in difficulty. I don't think anybody will be um, disagreeing with me me on that. You know, there's a, there's a huge amount of huge amount of issues surrounding our aerospace and, and airlines. And um, you know what 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 we felt was it needed a voice. It needed an opportunity to come together. It needed an opportunity, you know, worldwide, globally. You know, the, one of the beauties of aerospace, everybody knows, it's a global industry. It's not just UK focused. It's a global industry. And Farnborough International Air Show was always a global um, event. Um, and therefore, we wanted people from around the globe to get together to talk about the issues that matter to them. And, and, and whilst a lot of this content may have been talked and, and, and discussed at the farm brochure itself. Everything is now through that COVID lens um, that, uh, that that most people are, are speaking through, and, and therefore it, it gives people the chance just to say, "Well, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? What do we need to do? How are we going to achieve it? What are the expectations?" All of those questions that you know that I'm sure organisations like yourself are asking all the time. Absolutely. No, that makes sense. So it's a, it's an opportunity to exchange uh, information, but also a bit of a morale boost. Maybe people can actually get together, uh, albeit uh, on a screen, at, le at least it's something. So, of course, apart from the wonderful flying display, which, you know, is, isn't realistic in current circumstances, um, the next best thing, it seems to me, about any air show is the chance to, to rub shoulders with your colleagues, interact with new contacts, get to know people. Um, and I know you're trying to recreate that to a degree through aspects of, of, the, of the online show, like the Meet the Buyer event. So how will that work in practice? How, how, apart from the webinars, which we'll get to in a minute, how will people be able to sort of interact with each other and, and brag about what their companies have to offer? So. The one thing we didn't want to do was create an absolute replication of the Farnborough show that would take place in its physical form because, it, you know, that, that's about meeting people regularly, hour after hour, and with people in different places around the world, you would have, you know, meetings starting at 3 a.m. in the morning, running through till probably 3 a.m. at night. Um, and, and that just wasn't realistic to, to replicate the meetings part of it. Um, and so what you would term from a, a, a traditional exhibition, we're not able to do, but we're trying to find some elements of it that can do. And one of them is, is the Meet the Buyer program. So um, at um, Farnborough last time in the 2018 show, there was 900 meetings took place over two mornings. I think there was around 11.5 million pounds for business. Uh, but it's about, you know, Meet the, meet the Buyer has had a major impact on the order books of SMEs. Um, you know, it's where those primes and tier one organizations, um, they have a strategic opportunity to bolster their supply chain, solve issues, identify problems. And we can do that virtually. And effectively, mm -hmm. we're, we're bringing that to, to Farnborough, whereby we are, you know, allowing people to meet and take part in that. And, you know, that, that's something that not everybody gets the chance to do on a regular basis. Sure. And since we're still at the at the registration stage now for the event, I mean, w what do people do to sign up for the Meet the Buyer event? Do they do they sort of declare online, well, I'd love to have meetings with certain types of people, and then somehow your team figure out how to how to sort of match people up? 
No, that's fine. That's right. So, so, so the key thing is is to sign up for the show. So, so come to our website, www.farmbrowshow.com, um, and there will be there's links to take you straight through it. Um, you know, we are emailing all our exhibitors from previous with the links on, and just sign up to the show, and, and it will be signposted as to how do you join webinars, how do you join Meet the Buyer, um, how do you join the fin sessions, all of those things. You know, the the Farm Brew Friday events. And, and literally just go on there and, and everything will be explained. And, and that launch is for, for trade, what we would term normally trade visitors, but would be people coming in and visiting our, our virtual exhibition will we'll open tomorrow. So. Good point. Now, you touched on Farmer Friday there. I know that's a, always been a particularly important aspect of the show, uh, an opportunity to engage with you know, the next generation of aviation professionals. What, what are you able to, to present online this year in, in that regard? Well, this is always, um, always a difficult piece to do online because one of the beauties of, of Farmer Friday and, and, and getting the young people Involved. I'm going to say young. We're talking about sort of up to the age of 25, and those wanting a career in aerospace and something. That's the general population we're aiming at. That's not mm-hmm. to say it's exclusive to those, but um, you know, that's all about coming and seeing it, and touching it, and feeling it, and smelling it, and, and those things. And you know, as much as you know, if people start doing that with their laptops while they're on a screen, that's going to look extraordinarily odd. So um, that, yeah. that bit, of course, is is missing. Um, but it, it is about the ability to engage people. And that's what Farmer Friday was there in the first place. It's about engaging with that next generation of aviation professionals. And it's a really important part of Farmer International Air Show Connect. Um, you know, it, we knew it's a global industry and there's a skills gap there and that young people um, aren't necessarily as engaged as we would want them to be with the amazing career opportunities that, that aerospace offers. Um, and it's also, it was a way of bringing STEM subjects to life, which is fundamental to encouraging people into aerospace. And, and therefore, what we've created is a, a lineup of, of wonderfully inspirational speakers, a lot of practical guidance, advice, and working with some great organizations to create and, and, and deliver the content. And, um, you know, fr- from that perspective, it, it really is about, you know, firing people's juices, but also just giving them a taster of, of what aerospace sure. can bring. Because, uh, we, you know, we... It's very easy for us to assume that people know all about aerospace when we're in it on a day-to-day basis. But often, yeah. if you're not in it, then people don't necessarily understand what it can offer. And if we just provide a small insight into into that, then I think we will do a good thing for industry. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Now, talking about the state of the industry, obviously, it's a, it's a critical time for aerospace, really quite a, quite a serious crisis. There's no point sugarcoating it. And of course, the UK Trade Association, ADS, is at the forefront of efforts to, uh, you know, to help companies pull through this. So how will ADS's role be reflected in this FIA Connect event? Because I understand ADS is, is essentially your, your parent company, or at least is involved in the running of the show. Yes, absolutely. ADS are our, are our parent company, and you know we're very proud to have them as our parent company. You know the the insight and knowledge that they bring to our show is valuable, and sorry, invaluable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's probably a better description of it. And, you know, naturally, as they would do on a normal farm, bro, they, they will pay a major part in FIA Connect. And we're working closely with those colleagues. They're, they're running a very busy program of events. For example, there's to be a defense growth partnership, aerospace growth partnership conferences. But also there's going to be a women in defense and a women in aerospace conferences as well, which I think is really important to continue the great work that they've been doing in those areas because we, we, can't, let that, we can't let that fold in the current crisis. We're going to keep beating the drum and banging the drum in these areas. And it's something that we, you know we're very proud of, and you know we see ourselves at Farmer International as part of ADS. And whilst we are a separate company that runs the air show, we we're part of that family, and it's important that we um, we work with them and, and we showcase what they're able to do. And you know they're also, I guess, finally using it as an opportunity to articulate a way forward for industry and to lead that engagement with the UK government, which, as you know, is absolutely critical in order to bring um, the aerospace industry back from the, the, the crisis it's facing at the moment. Fair enough. That, that makes sense. Now, looking at the program for the, you know, the online webinars and, and conferences, uh, I see that urban air mobility is quite a prominent feature. Um, and you're, you're actually going to be stage, staging what I suppose we could call the second edition of your global urban air summit. I went to the first one. I thought it was fantastic. 
why do you feel that this this urban air mobility sector is so important? And would you expect uh, to see it being uh, you know a bigger aspect of of future shows once we're we're back to real life again with with air shows? Yeah, I mean we were we're absolutely delighted with the first global air summit, and, and thank you for your kind words, you know, about um, what what you felt about it. I, I thought it was a it was a great event, and it was a a great opportunity to discuss the reality of how new technology in this area will operate. You know, we're very proud of our association with innovation. We're always trying to have farm first. It's the home of pioneering spirit, and you know, it's our intention to constantly try and be at the forefront of conversations about the glo- where the global industry is heading. And whilst there are there's clearly some major issues facing the aerospace industry that, that sits outside urban air, but we also can't forget what else is going on, and, and urban air is part of this. And we firmly believe in our intention to continue to bring it about a greater understanding and how future flight will operate. And you know, how, how are we going to do that? What are we going to do? We, we've got um, you know some really interesting and relevant. Um, content for our audience and the ability to make connections and secure future investment from around the world. You know, the, the US Air Force's Agility Primes are seeking international partners in particular. Yes. You know, the UK EV told companies how have what they would call birds in the air to work with them. Um, and, and, you know, it, there is so much going on in this area. I think last week NASA announced a new, you know, AAM partnership strategy, you know, targeting broader international participation. And, you know, the Future Flight Challenge, Gary Cutts was talking about where the UK was looking at involving other non-UK companies in terms of participating in UK government-funded projects to faster investment. It seems to me we can, we can say this will be the first sort of true full-blown air show uh, to have been held on online, uh, you know, l- loads of people have had webinars and conferences and, and, and association meetings. But I think this is probably the first full-blown online air show, uh, which is which is actually quite exciting. And yeah, we're, we're excited. Look, I'm mm-hmm. not going to pretend for one moment mm-hmm. it would replace Farnborough. Um, no. you know, we don't we don't want it to. We you know we are. We can't wait to welcome the world back in 2022 to uh, to our small part of leafy Hampshire and, um, and 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 get people coming on the trains and the, and the planes and the automobiles and and and, and coming down the roads and, and the fields yeah. and everything. But whilst we can't do that, um, we're excited to bring something different because, as I said, we're at we're, we love to be at the forefront of innovation and we as a company like to do things differently and we like to see things differently and we're hoping that this will be a success and most importantly, as I started, bring the aerospace world together at a time when they need it most. Yeah, no, good point. And with that in mind, I mean, obviously t- you had no choice but to call off the show and 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 actually your decision's completely vindicated when we, we look at how things are now. But things are to a degree beginning to return to something resembling more normal in, in many countries. Um, so do you, do you still believe that real air shows will come back? I mean, I'm not going to hold you to exactly when or how, but um, can you sort of see a path to recovery where you believe, yes, you know what, in 2020, there probably will be some air shows maybe even the back end of this year and certainly there'll be the Farnborough air show in 2022 as far as you as far as you know yeah I mean look I'm the chief executive of a company that runs an air show I'm not going to tell you anything other than air shows (laughs) of course (laughs) or or that but um, you know we firmly believe that to be the case the what an air show offers is unique to any other medium in terms of the sales and marketing aspect and the meetings aspect and the supplier aspect of of, of of what these companies do on a regular basis. You know, getting the amount of time to be able to meet in one place. I, I don't see a virtual show replacing it in the long run. I expect people, I expect to come back. We're, we're looking forward to Paris being a success next year. And we're, and, and we're, we're hoping and praying that it is. You know, I was speaking to my counterpart over there and, you know, I wished him all the luck in the world that um, he's been able to do and, and develop that. And, um, you know, we're, at the moment, as it stands, the Bar and Air Show in November this year, we're planning to still to still run that. Um, naturally, things may change that that, that dictate otherwise. But as it stands, like you said, the world is starting to open up, and we will do everything we can in that um, show to make it as you know to to advise our Bar and colleagues and make it as safe and as uh, as great for people to have as much participation as they possibly can, given the, the circumstances that surround it and the, the limitations that naturally the world is under at the moment. Yeah, no, absolutely, that makes sense. And uh, of course, in hindsight, I suppose it was it was never the case that you could have pressed ahead with the show this year. Was that sort of abundantly clear in March? I mean, as agonising as that might have been. Um, yes, it, you know, it, it, it no was. Choice. I mean. 
there was kind of two things behind it. Um, one was we had had it made abundantly clear by our statutory services providers. So, you know, ambulance, council, environmental health, all of those things that they could not guarantee um, any kind of um, attendance at the show. It's not that they're saying they wouldn't come. It's not that at all. But yeah. they were saying we, we, poss- we can't possibly tell you whether we're going to be able to support that show. Um, and as a result of that, it doesn't matter how big or small our show is, you're not allowed to host a show in the UK without those statutory services there. Oh, right. And you know, yeah. when you get 80,000 people there, we, we couldn't safely do that. Um, so we were left with little choice from that perspective. At the same time, industry were facing a position where, you know, they were about to press go on the build and the, you know, all, all the preparations and, and, you know, sort of sign off checks for huge amounts of things regarding the Farnborough Air Show. And it didn't seem right for us to just go, okay, we'll wait then and, and see see what happens because that wouldn't have been fair in industry. So whilst I, I, I'm acutely aware that we are still having those discussions with industry about our position, we, we definitely did, you know, take in their thoughts and their feelings about how, you know, uh, as to what other costs they would have to incur because our costs are, on, I'm not going to say a, a small part of what they do, but it's not the only part of what they do at Farmer. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Good. Well, that's fantastic. Gareth, thank you for explaining all that to us. Uh, it's very Pleasure. exciting, just a few weeks away now. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to be there with brass knobs on to c- cover everything that's happening. And uh, I wish you well with the remaining arrangements for that. Thank you. We look forward to virtually welcoming you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.